recent Hunga Tonga Hunga Hawaii eruption was huge eruption and it, it made a huge atmospheric wave. And this wave propagated all over the world. Even if Japan is far away from the volcano, we had tsunami generated by this eruption. My name is Mie Ichihara. I'm an associate professor of Earthquake Research Institute of University of Tokyo. I'm studying physics of volcanoes. Today we are in Hakone volcano and it had an eruption in 2015. So we are investigating the dynamics of volcanic eruption and also we are developing the method to monitor eruptions. For monitoring, we mainly use atmospheric wave. Uh, my name is Dan Ramatsu, a PhD researcher of the Earthquake Research Institute. I'm studying the mechanisms of volcanic explosion based on field observations such as infrasound, video, and seismic observation. Infrasound is a very low frequency sound wave and that is inaudible to humans. Infrasound has information of dynamics of volcanic eruption that occurs near the ground surface. For example, uh, we can know the intensity of the explosion from the amplitude of the infrasound wave. Today, uh, as you can see, the weather is bad and uh, in such situations, we can observe volcano by video, but uh, infrasound is not affected by such bad weather. We can investigate the surface phenomena by using infrasound, especially by combining with seismic or video observation. We can constrain the mechanism of the volcanic phenomena. So to understand the dynamics of volcanic eruption, how magma flows or breaks in pieces are very important. But it's very difficult to use magma itself, so we use some similar material to simulate magma in the laboratory. I'm Claudia, I am a postdoc uh, from Chile. I have been studying my past year the acoustic dynamics of the eruption of the volcano. So magma is a complex fluid, have a both liquid and solid nature. So we try to uh, study with two fluids. One is the viscoelastic fluid that can slow very slowly but break like a glass. The second fluid that we use is a polymer that behave like a viscous material when we apply a large force, but behave elastically when it's below of this force. The experiment for me is kind of to understand all the complexity of the eruption dynamics, the nature of volcano in this case. So the next step is to analyze another complex material, like a suspension, because the magma also have a crystal, and the crystal have a different shapes and size, and that can also produce different behavior on, on the fluid. We are getting better knowledge about how to deal with this complex nature of magma, and how to model and simulate the behaviors. I am Franco Tapia. I'm a physicist and doctor in material science. Volcano and magma flow events are interesting to me because uh, this kind of events are very rich in physical phenomena, which include periclastic flows, uh, magma flows, explosion, acoustic. In general, I'm interested in, in granular flow. Granular materials is a collection of individual particles flowing in a collective way. Of course, these kind of materials are very complex in nature. You can have a different kind of sizes, different kind of interaction. To have a better understanding, a basic understanding of this material, we have a physical model which we control size, particles, and interaction. And then once we have some results, some ideas to understand this collective flow, we can test it to match theoretical prediction. So once we have a good fitting in between both, we can think that one theoretical idea could be useful to explain how the material flows. I have two wishes. The, the one is I really want to connect um, our laboratory experiment and the, uh, our laboratory research to the field observation to understand the volcano dynamics. And the second is I'm interested in how the oceanic 
eruption, like Fungatonga, goes on. So we are hoping to have a project to study this eruption and the eruption in the ocean islands.